Today I want to talk to you about how to stay sane in this insane world. Uh, let me make a statement to begin with, and this is going to be a very important statement for you to understand. Here it is. You might want to write this down. You can possess eternal life and not have abundant life. All right. A lot of folk think because they have eternal life, they've got it all. But the truth is, you can have eternal life. You can be saved and be so messed up. That would be a better amen than that. <laughs> Romans uh, chapter number 12, uh, verse 1 through 2. And while they're getting that up and let me just go ahead and say once again, we're so glad for our visitors that are here. Thank you for being in the house today. Uh, we really love you and appreciate you, and I wish it were possible to get to shake hands with everybody and talk with everybody. And at the same time, I'm really glad for all the home folks that are here today. You guys just look great. So uh, in the book of Romans, chapter 12, verse number 1 through 2. Now, I put on Facebook just in the last few days. Uh, that 45 minutes is long enough for a good sermon. And it is way too long for a bad one. <laughs> so I'm going to keep that in mind, and I'm planning on signing off about 12.30 before 45 minutes, so uh, we're going to try to go that way. Uh, turn with me again, Romans 12, 1 through 2, very familiar scripture. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable to God, which is your reasonable service. And do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. And just like I did last week, I'm going to read that out of the New Living Translation. And so, dear brothers and sisters, I plead with you to give your bodies to God because of all He's done for you. Has He done a lot for you? Amen. Let them be a living, living and holy sacrifice, the kind He will find acceptable. This is truly the way to worship Him. Don't copy, listen carefully, don't copy the behavior and customs of this world. 
but let God transform you into a new person by changing the way you think. How does God transform you? By changing the way you think. Listen, you can have all you want. I mean, you can just come and say all the prayers you want, but until you change the way you think, you're just floundering. Amen? You can even be saved. I'm going to say it again. You can even be saved, but if you don't change the way you think, you'll never have abundant life. You'll never enjoy God's best for you. A lot of Christians sit on pews and wonder why God is doing to them what He is doing. Because that's, every time something goes wrong, we want to blame it on God, don't we? Couldn't have anything at all to do with the way we think and live. There is a law in God's Word that simply says, whatever you sow, you are going to reap. Can't get around it. It's called the law of the harvest. If you go around planting wild oats all week, don't come to church playing prayer for a crop failure. Because it's a waste of time. Whatever you sow, that shall you also reap. It's God's law. Does God forgive? Oh, He really does. I had a phone call just the other day, and I'm a little bit reluctant to say this because we're on the internet. Uh, but I mean, it wasn't anybody from here, but I, I have a preacher friend that called me about somebody that's in his church, and he had done something really, really wrong. Illegal. A church member had done something really illegal. He had got involved in all kind of craziness when he was supposed to be... I'm going to say too much because people on the internet would know who I'm talking about. Uh, but uh, he was in law enforcement and he was dealing drugs. And when they caught him, preacher called me and said, I don't know what to do. I said, there's nothing you can do. He said, uh, what do you mean there's nothing we do? I said, because there is a law of the harvest. And when a cop goes to court for dealing drugs, he's going to get it. Come on. It, it's the law of the harvest. God will forgive you, but the county, the state, won't. Everybody say amen. amen. And so a lot of good forgiven people are in jail. That's the reason we go to jail and work with people. Lord have mercy. And so God in His Word, talking to church folk, Romans 12, 1 through 2, He said, now I want you to understand that you need to present your body to God. Holy and acceptable. Because that's really how you worship Him. If you're not presenting your body to Him, I'm really wanting the medal today. If you're really not presenting your body to Him, then you miss what Christianity is all about. Christianity is about Jesus forgiving and then you learning how to serve Him in a pleasing way. You learning how to live your life in a way that's pleasing to Him. Amen? I am really weary with Christians that say, you know, I'm a Christian, but they live just any old way. Do anything they want to do. Can I tell you there's something terribly wrong with that idea? Amen? The way to have abundant life is to be transformed by the renewing of your mind. And so new Christians come to church and they don't know everything. But if we can, and that's what church is about, it's about discipleship, teaching people to think like God thinks. Say, so, oh, I couldn't think like God thinks. Oh, you really can. The Bible said we have the mind of Christ. Now, you don't have that just because you got saved. Come on. Yeah, there you go. 
Some of y'all looking at me hard right now. You don't have the mind of Christ just because you got saved. When you got saved, you were still just as carnal as you could be. But you get the mind of Christ when you start digesting His book and believing what it says and start being transformed by thinking differently. I'm glad that I think different than I did when I came to God. And if you're just waiting to hear it from the pulpit, you're missing out. Because you've got to know what the Bible has to say. This is a book you ought to read every day of your life. Now the reason there's not a lot of excitement right there is because a lot of people don't. Just want me to kind of hurry up on past that. Let's, let's get them away from that. But this is life. This is a living word. Everybody say amen. amen. Now I've already rambled a lot, but I said last week and I'll say it again, the world is spiraling out of control right now. Have you noticed how crazy and how utterly ridiculous this world is? Things that you would have never believed would have happened, not only in the United States, but right here in Mississippi. I mean, right now, and somehow the crazier it gets, the more acceptable it becomes to the world. I heard about the Little League series just the other day. Uh, Mr. Shilling was announcing Little League series. and done a great job. I got to watch one of those games. I, I love to watch kids playing ball. And, but he was announcing, but he made the sad mistake of tweeting something. See, we're living in a world that demands you think like them. Yeah. If you don't think like the world, okay. you're wrong. Yeah. It couldn't be that the world's wrong. Right. And the Bible's right. right. Come on. The Bible is old-fashioned. Yeah. And so Mr. Shitting tweeted a tweet and he said, only 9 to 10 percent of Muslims are extremists. That's statistics. And then he finished it with a short tweet and said, in Germany, only 7% of Germans were Nazis. How did that work for him? And the next day, Mr. Schilling is gone. Because he said something so terrible against Muslims. Turn on your TV and listen to what the world is saying about Christianity every day. I, I don't want to just I don't want to just kind of but let me tell you how crazy we are. We are to, at the place what I don't Bruce Jenner. He's still Bruce to me. But, but Bruce Jenner came out and said, I feel like a woman, so I must be. And the world said, what a hero. Tim Tebow prays in a football game. And they say, what a shame. You shouldn't be doing that. And they down and run him down the road because he showed his Christianity at a football game. How sick can our world get? Come on, everybody. I'm telling you, our world is It is absolutely not. It's unpopular to have a man and a woman marry. Marriage is going, it's become very unpopular. Did you know that? Unless you're same sex. Then it's popular. Come on, our world is headed downhill. In our U.S. military, I, I'm, I'm, I'll get on my soapbox today. In the U.S. military, you can get in trouble for witnessing about Jesus Christ in our U.S. military, but it's quite all right for men and women to use the same restroom. Can I tell you, our world is crazy. Come on. Everybody in our world seems angry. Everybody is upset. Everybody.
everybody is depressed. Now I have to tell you, it's kind of depressing sometimes. But the world is on this downhill course. And the world is out. I'm going to change direction here just a moment. The world is out to dictate how you think and how you feel and how you react. The world is out to tell you what is acceptable and what is not acceptable. I'm, I'm just, I'm going to tell you, I, I feel wild this morning and I'm a long way from my nose. But may I tell you that we're in trouble, and I'm not politicking. Everybody knows me. No, I don't politic in this pulpit. But I am concerned when Hillary Clinton can say, deep-seated relig religious beliefs must be changed. Why? They seem to have worked quite well for all these years, all these centuries. But deep-seated religious beliefs, and that's what the world is out for, to change your belief system into theirs. You've got to think like us. You've got to say amen to what we say amen to, but you can't believe the Bible. How many of you are glad the Word of God is still true? And I'm not going to let the world dictate what I think, Amen. what I preach, Amen. and what I believe. Amen? Amen. Amen. I'm trying to find page three because <laughs> I left notes a long time ago and I just want to kind of get into what I want to talk about. Let me go ahead and read this scripture to you in Galatians 5, 16 and 17. How do you maintain your sanity? And we're leaving what we talked about last week here. You do it by living in the Spirit. Walking in the Spirit. Remember last week? That was one of the last things we talked about. Galatians 5, 16 says, This I say then, walk in the Spirit, and you shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. For the flesh lusts against the Spirit, and the Spirit against the flesh. And these are contrary one to another, so that you cannot do the things that you would. Now, he said they're lusting against each other. Listen carefully. There's a war going on in you right now. Maybe not this very minute, but every day that you live, there is a war going on between flesh and spirit. Everything about flesh is the world. And everything about spirit is God. And there is this warfare that's taking place. I, I get a kick out of these churches that meet together and wear fatigues and combat boots. And they have warfare conferences. About as ridiculous as I've ever heard. The warfare is not in China, it's not in Asia, it's, the warfare is right between your ears. Now, I'm not saying there's no warfare going on in China, but until you can conquer what's going on in your life, forget about China. Work on you for a little while. Come on. The truth of it is most Christians have never conquered what's going on in their own mind. That's the reason we are so wishy-washy. Does everybody understand wishy-washy? you got to be 71 to understand. That means... You're this way one time, and you're that way another. And the next time you're that way again, and the next time you're that way. And that's all the way back in the Old Testament. God said about Ephraim, she's a backsliding heifer. Every time you get her out of the ditch, she slides back in. Every time you get her straightened out, she's going right back to the same old stuff. The New Testament said it's like a dog that returns to its mom. Have a good meal today. <laughs> it's like a hog that returns to its walk. Have you ever noticed you can get an old hog, clean that thing up, wash that sucker real good, put a ribbon around his neck, and as soon as you turn him loose, he's headed off to the dirtiest mud hole he can find. 
There are some Christians that try to live for God just like that. Now those of you that said amen, I'm glad for you because that's the truth right now. I've been pastoring a long, long time. And I spent a lot of my time trying to get them washed again. No telling what we could do in this world that we wasn't having to wash Christians that got dirty again. How many people we can win the Christ? What we could change in this world if we could just keep people doing the right thing? It's not good enough to come to church and pray at an altar and leave and shoot up. It's not good enough to come to church and sing Amazing Grace and go climb in bed with... I'm going to tell you something. Listen to me. It's time for the church to grow up and put on Christ. The Apostle Paul said, put on the new man. What do you mean put on? Talking to saved people. He just simply said you're saved but you're not living like it. There you go. We'll work on that sermon again next week. <laughs> there are a whole lot of people that never get it. That never become a witness. As a matter of fact, their whole life confuses the world. People get confused when you're talking about Jesus and the next minute you're cussing on Facebook. <laughs> what in the world is wrong with us? Are you a Christian or not? Take your shingle down. Tell the truth about it. I'm worldly as I can be. At least you won't confuse other people and neither will you fool yourself. Well, it's just time for us to be who we say we are. And you can be. Here's the amazing thing. Jesus said, I've come that you might have life and that more abundantly. How come you're not living an abundant life? Now, I've said it before. Let me say it again because I don't want you confused. You can have eternal life and not have abundant life. My hearing aid's coming out. I can hear it all right, though. Can y'all? Right. You can have it you can have the eternal life, but you cannot, you can live so that you don't have abundant life. And I don't know about you, but I want all that Jesus paid for, don't you? Amen. 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 How can you have abundant life? How can I live blessed in this world? Amen. Quit blaming God because you're doing stupid things. Amen. You know, people that say, well, I don't know why God let this happen to me. I, I, I've got bills that I can't pay. God didn't sign that bill. Punch that up and quit acting like a fool. If you go down and promise to pay, duh. I got news for you. The bill's coming in. I kind of love getting old because everybody excuses you. <laughs> but I think it's time that we tell the truth. Everything that's going on, I've said it a hundred times here, but you know, people riding around with cars that you can read the newspaper through their tire. And as soon as they have a flat, they blame. It's the devil that done it. <laughs> no, it's just bad time. <laughs> what did you expect? Amen. <laughs> so how do you have peace in this world? We better get on with that, man. So he said, you walk in the spirit and you won't fulfill the lust of the flesh. The war for 
Sanity is in your mind. Yeah, you probably already guessed that. It's going on right here. How can I maintain sanity when everybody else is mad, everybody else is crazy, people are doing stupid things? Well, you do it by obeying the Word of God, number one. Amen? And you learn to control your thinking by renewing your mind in the Word. Amen? If you've got something going on in your life, the Word has the answer for it. I want everybody to listen to that. I said the Word has the answer. The world does not have the answer. But it is in the Word. So, get in the Bible and see what the Bible has to say about your situation. And when you do it, now here we go. This is where the rubber hits the highway right here. It's not enough to know what the Bible says. The world is full of people that know what the Bible says. They just don't do it. The Bible said, He that knoweth to do good and doeth it not, to him it is sin. So what good does it do to pack a Bible under your arm if you don't believe it? Enough to apply it in your life. Well, can I change one more racket? I am appalled at this work. It is so popular to be, well, it has been popular to be a Christian. And it's kind of popular to give lip service to Christians. Yes. You know, do you see people living like fools? I'm talking about in the media, in the world, movie stars, and talking about God. They wouldn't know the Holy Ghost if he came in with a tall silk hat no. <laughs> Have no clue. But it's just kind of popular to say, yeah, thank God. And everybody, Christians, say, oh, they're Christians. <laughs> everybody that names the name of Christ are not for real. <laughs> Everything that shines is not gold. <laughs> Well, I better get to helping you know how to think. So here is, we talked about this briefly last week. Control your thinking and you will control your actions. Well, that's, that's so simple until it is profound. You know, people say, pray for me that I'll overcome that. No. I can pray till I get blue in the face trying to pray for you that you will overcome something. But until you make up your mind, I'm going to control the way I think about that. Because that is, remember we talked about it last week, that is repentance. Repentance is not coming to all and oh, I'm sorry, Lord. That's not repentance. Amen. Repentance is changing your mind about what you're doing. That means a 180. The Bible said godly sorrow works with it. So if you come and say, I'm sorry, God, and change the way you're thinking about it, that works with it. But repentance is not just bawling. Amen. Not just squalling. I'm sorry. Forgive me, Lord. And never change the way you think. Listen. The war is between your ears. How you think determines your destiny. As a matter of fact, let me tell you, wherever you're at in life right now is a result of how you were thinking in the past. Amen. How many of you knew that? Amen. Yeah, oh yeah. yeah. You're where you're at because of the way you think. I'm wanting to pick on people, but I won't. I won't. The hardest thing is to change the way we feel. The way we feel about ourselves. No, I'm going to leave them alone. I'm going to leave them alone. But we've got some wonderful group of young ladies here that are working on, and, and you know what? What they're working on is not, everybody said, oh, how do you break the addiction of drugs? Come on, come on, come on. You know, pray for me that, I'm a drug addict, pray for me that I'll be, you know, you know it's good to pray for people. 
I mean, that's wonderful. That's biblical. We pray for people. But you know the greatest prayer that can be prayed for you that you'll change your mind Amen. about the way you think. Yeah. 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 Because only when you do that will you be able to break that addiction. You don't have to have anything else but you and God. If you change the way you think. Let's read it. 2 Corinthians chapter 10 verse 3 through 5. Though we walk in the flesh, we do not war according to the flesh. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty to God, mighty in God, pulling down a stronghold. What's it? For the pulling down a stronghold, casting down arguments and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God, bringing every thought into captivity to the obedience of Christ. And I want to ask you, tell you, number one, either you have your thoughts in captivity or your thoughts have you in captivity. That's not about right. That's exactly right. You either have your thoughts in captivity or your thoughts have you in captivity. Whatever it is that you spend your time Thinking about is what you will gravitate toward. Amen. So if you're struggling with whatever it is, if you're struggling with a girl, <laughs> I, I, I'm, I'm going I'm to have to just ramble here a second. I'm going to keep my 45 minutes in mind. But you know, don't be foolish. I, I, I tell everybody this little story. I was preaching in Oklahoma one time, an evangelist, and there was a guy that was in that church. He was praying at 3 o'clock in the morning, 2 o'clock in the morning, every night, and we're trying to sleep. And he said, oh, oh, and I went back to where he was at. I said, brother, is there anything I'm helping you with? I didn't want to tell him, man, you're keeping me or my wife away. He said, yeah, you can pray for me. I want you to pray that God will take the desire for women away from me. I said, forget it and go to bed and go to sleep. <laughs> because God created you. That's as natural as a goose going barefoot. God created you that way. But listen, the difference is the Holy Spirit keeps desires in back. It don't have to Occupy your mind every waking moment. I mean, you've got a problem. You've got to learn how to control your thoughts. And so when I say problem with a girl, if that's all you ever think about, chasing a girl, come, some people come to church looking for a girl, looking for, and they're not just looking for a girl. <laughs> so you girls don't need to understand this. Some people come to church and they're looking for a woman. They're looking for a bed fellow. And, but God help you. You need to change the way you think. And it works the other way around. Everything in our life, if it's alcohol, look, think different and you'll win the battle. Whatever it is, if you will get it in your mind from the very beginning, God is able to set me free through His Word. Yes. I'm going to believe His Word. Yes. I'm going to take every thought captive. And so when some crazy thought goes through your mind, take it captive in the name of Jesus. Yes. Amen? Come on, everybody. Yes. 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 No, I'm not dwelling on it. I'm not dwelling on it. By the way, a thought is not a sin. Amen. See, a lot of Christians live in condemnation because they have a bad thought. Yeah. Jesus had a bad thought. Yeah. Come on. Come on. Some of you look like you're going to fall over. Let me catch you real quick. <laughs> the devil said to Jesus, bow down and worship me. He had to process it. Yes, he did. It was a thought. And the Bible said in Hebrew that he was tempted in all points yes. just as we were. Which tells me that he had to be tempted to commit fornication. The Bible said he was tempted without sin. 
Temptation is not a sin. That's a job of the devil. Our job is to take thoughts captive yes. and put them in the right place. Yes. Come on, everybody. Let's pray and see what we have to do. Somebody said, when you think it, it's a matter of well doing. No, you need to take that thought captive. And if you take a thought captive, you put it in its right place. You discard it. I've got a file 13 that I carry with me all the time. I hope you do. Do y'all have a... Y'all understand file 13? That's a garbage can. I have a file 13. I have it with me all the time. And thoughts come to my mind and I immediately put it in file 13. And say, in Jesus. You know, the, the amazing thing is, and I said it a while ago, people are always, have you been around Christians that's trying to pull down strongholds in China? Yeah. I come against the strongholds in China. And it sounds good, boy, I'm in your ear. Take this scripture in context. Amen. And it's talking about what's going on between your ears. Yes. Yes. You might as well say amen. amen. It's what's going on between you. Strongholds that we have in our life. You might have grown up with some strongholds. I'm going to tell you right now, you did. Yeah. And they're strongholds. But guess what? The weapons of our warfare are mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds in my mind. And then he just goes right on. And he said, every argument. And that's what strongholds is. It always has an argument. To make whatever you're doing normal. Yes. I'm normal. So everybody's like me. You know what's the craziest thing? Everybody thinks everybody's like them. You need to be a pastor a little while and you'll figure it out real quick. Ain't nobody like you. <laughs> Not because I'm perfect, but boy, we should learn different. <laughs> but here's, here's the thing. It's not enough to go around just fighting all the time, taking everything captive. I take this thought captive. Boom. Take this thought captive. Have you ever noticed they'll climb right back out? <laughs> See old breezy hand coming right back out. He's trying to get right back out. Have you noticed that? Yeah. Well, let me tell you, it's not enough just to have a file 13. You've got to have replacement. And so you replace those bad thoughts with God's work. He was hungry. He had been fasting for 40 days. He was hungry. The devil came and said, turn these rocks into bread. And immediately, he took that thought captive and said, it is written, man shall not live by bread alone by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. And he countered the devil on every place by replacing a bad dog with a good one. Right out of his word. You can change your life if you will apply His Word to your life. Yes. Listen to me. I won't tell you anything any more profound than that today. You can change your life yes. by replacing bad thoughts with God's Word. Yes. See, everybody in the house ought to be just saying, Praise God, that's good news right there. Because it is. Watch. Watch. Philippians 4, 4 through 9. Y'all give me five more minutes, will you? Will you? Yes. I was going to take it, so. <laughs> <laughs> Philippians 4, 4 through 9. Always. Everybody say always. Always. Be full of joy in the Lord. That means, that, and then he said, and again I say rejoice. And so here is some secrets you need to get. The first thing you need to do is learn to praise. Yes. Yes. Everybody say praise. Pray. Pray. Now that's easy, isn't it? Until it comes to the next one. Let everyone see that you are considerate in all that you do. 
And that kind of takes it away from you. When everybody sees that you are considerate of them in all that you do. First obligation is to God. The second one is to others. You're not happy because you are self-centered. And it's about you. And about not about others. I have an obligation. Jesus said it this way. Love God and your neighbor as yourself. And so Paul picked it right up. And he said, rejoice. Let everyone see that you're considerate in all that you do. Remember the Lord is coming. That'll keep you happy. Don't worry about anything. Instead, pray about everything. How much could we change if we stop that? Has anybody fixed anything worrying? I want you to look at me. I, I used to worry a lot. Seriously. Worry don't fix anything. You can't change anything. But you can just get burdened down and that's as worthy as you can get. When you're just worried about everything. He said don't worry about everything. But instead pray about everything. Tell God what you need. And thank Him for all that He's done. Boy, that is powerful. Then, and that's the next word, verse. Then you will experience God's peace which exceeds anything we can understand. His peace will guard your hearts and minds as you live in Christ Jesus. His peace. Jesus said, my peace I give unto you. And most of us never take advantage of it. His peace will guard your heart. You ever have anything just kind of worrying you to death? You know, his peace will guard you. Years ago, I used a little example here. I want to use it one more time, and I'm going to close and give another call. But I need some help here. I need, I need some. Give me two or three men. Anybody? Just two or three men. And you can come. Just give me two or three. I mean, that's plenty. We've got four good men here. Amen. Now, I want to tell you, we're living in a world full of stress. You don't just come out here and get around me. I want you to form a circle around me. The Bible said that His peace is ours. And if we'll do those things, if we'll praise Him, if we'll worship Him, if we'll be considerate of others, His peace will guard our heart. And so when something is coming against me, i got some big old boys. Yes. They guard me. Yes. Can you imagine where, I mean, worry comes at you. God's peace steps up. Yes. Uh -uh, you can't touch it. All I have to do is love God and be considerate of other people. Yes. And thank Him and pray instead of worry. And his peace guards my heart. Yes. You can be the enemy. Come over here and try to get me if you would. I, I mean, I, I want you to see this little picture. Don't bring none. I, I, I mean, see, I, I don't have to worry about it because God's peace fights my battle. Oh, do you need somebody to fight your battle? Do you need God on your side? You need to consider the people around you. Oh, you never had a preacher tell you that. I need some consideration sometimes. I probably need it this morning. But the truth of it is, we're all kind of messed up people sometimes. But we all need the peace of God rooted in our heart and protecting us. 
Thank you, brother. God bless you. Thank you. Everybody. One final thing, the Apostle Paul said, I'm still reading scripture, one final thing. Fix your thoughts. Did you catch that word fix? Yes. Fix your thoughts on what is true. Yes. But true by itself is not good enough. Right. Pastor Capers teaching this morning, said the truth can kill you. Yes. But if you fix your thoughts on what is true, honorable, right, pure, lovely, and admirable. Think about these things that are excellent and worthy of praise. Keep putting into practice all you've learned and received from me, the apostle said. Everything you heard from me and saw me doing, then, then, everybody said then? Yeah. Then the God of peace will be with you. All because of the way you think. Would you bow your head with me? There are people here today.